Thanks for watching this video. Today we're going to go through how to install Planning Analytics 2.02. .02. So I'm going to focus on this version, but it should be the same in any Planning Analytics version. Uh, here what we're looking at is the set of products that you should be able to download from your uh, IBM Passport Advantage website. There's PA2 with whatever the build number is. This is the one for Windows. If you're going to be using um, Linux or a different OS, you'll see a different OS code. ML is for multi-language. Uh, the next one you'll see PA underscore CLT, that's for the client. And there's a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. I recommend downloading both. You won't need to install them on the server. They're only needed for uh, uh, end users on their workstation. And that, the, if folks are using a 32-bit version of Excel, they run, install the 32-bit one. If they're running a 64-bit version of Excel, they run the 64-bit one. When we install Planning Analytics on the, on the server, uh, most of the time it's a 64-bit server, so I haven't installed a 32-bit server in a long time. There's also a, a plugin for Excel and a license key that you'll need to install. The last one here, PAW, is a Planning Analytics workspace. Uh, for, fo for folks that have that license, this has the install for that. That's really the front end uh, web tool for um, kind of a, a newer uh, a newer web tool than the TM1 web. But what we're going to be focusing on today is we're only installing Planning Analytics 2.0.2. .2. So we're still going to get TM1 web, but we're going to, um, it's just going to do the, uh, do the base install for us. So as we go into it, uh, you'll notice there's this WinX 64-bit H folder. We go into that folder. We want to find the IS setup. Now, a really common uh, challenge here is where folks tend to just run this of their current user. They can run into challenges with some security environments. When you find this file, you need to right-click on it and say Run as Administrator. You'll get a prompt saying, is this really OK? You can click Yes. And now we'll start seeing the splash screen for the install piece and we'll go through, we'll pick our language, agree to the statement, the license agreement. Um, you wanna, I usually just pick production environments and leave the defaults as they are. Just wanna check you've got enough space available. Uh, as you can see, it's about 4.39 gig is what's required. So click next to here. Are you sure you wanna, do you, it will ask you to prompt to, if you wanna create that folder, that's fine. There are different options for what you can install when you install the client. Probably this is the server we're installing. So we do want to install all the data tier items. I include the samples. Uh, the web tier, I include all these items here. Uh, this TM1 rich tier, I don't include performance modeler anymore. Uh, Cognos in and I don't include Cognos Insight. I do include the APIs, perspectives, and architect. So Performance Modeler is a tool that folks can use to do some uh, well, modeling. Uh, they can build cubes and dimensions and processes in the tool. I'm not a fan of it. I, I recommend folks to use Architect to do all the pieces they need to there. Uh, Cognos Insight is a front-end tool that folks can use to create a dashboarding um, really screens. And they can you can email those screens around, and folks will log in, and, and they'll work fine when they open them up. Again, I don't rec really re recommend this for folks that are just starting out. I recommend starting with perspectives as the first tool to learn. And then as you once you start exploring more perspectives, uh, if you do want to get more into the dashboarding piece, then then start looking at Cognos Insight and and you know Planning LX Workspace and other other GUI tools that are available. So click next, click next, click next. Now it's going to install. It runs for a bit. So this last little bit took about 10 minutes. I just put the recording on pause so you don't have to wait through that. Uh, now that we're at the end, I usually check the Start IBM Cognos Configuration checkbox and click Finish. So what this is going to do is it's going to open up the IBM Cognos Configuration tool. For TM1 or for Planning Analytics, there's not too much configuration required. This is for folks that are familiar with Cognos BI. This is a, this is really the same tool, just a different set of configuration items available. Uh, on the Cognos BI side of things, there's there's more stuff that can be configured. 
and also if there are uh, if we're connecting into Active Directory or any kind of LDAP authentication provider, there's a few steps that would be required on the Cognos BI setup to allow that to happen. Um, so here we are, we're logged in. Now, at each one of these items, you can right-click on uh, let's a couple here. You can right-click and start on some of the services. You can also right-click and create new resources if you if you need to, and test. So you'll notice that after I do the install, most of these items are stopped. That's just how they how they are. Um, I'm going to step through now. I could change these to um, could change these names here. The lo login from local host to the machine name. For this particular server, it's not going to make an issue because they're only ever it's just a demo server. But that's something to be conscious of. Is if if this is a production install, you want to go through and change local host references to the the physical server name. And then once you decide how you're going to reference it, you want to be consistent. So it's either going to be uh, IP, or it's going to be server name, or fully, quali fully qualified server name. So server name dot domain dot suffix. And just stepping through the different screens, you'll see there's different configuration options we have here. If we were, um, this is through the gateway. So the gateway here references. Um, uh, some additional configuration settings you can do, and also uh, Planning Analytics Workspace, as well as Contributor, use this gateway to connect into TM1 data. Um, you can have support for IPv6 if you're, if you're making that transition. Security, authentication, allow anonymous access. <coughs> Uh, you may want to turn this off. Um, that's uh, that's something to, to consider. Also, under cryptography, yeah, cryptography, you tend to leave that that separate. So here, under authentication, sometimes I, if you want to connect into a Active Directory, you'll right-click on authentication, put in a name. Typically, I put the all caps domain name. So if your domain name is, you know, Acme, A C M E. Then I'll just put ACME all caps as the as the domain name for Active Directory. The, here are the other providers, so Java provider, Cognos Series 7, LDAP for Active Directory, LDAP for Tivoli, Oracle, uh, other LDAP, SAML, SAP, SiteMinder. So whatever your authentication providers, you can set up the connection here, and that will pass through. Here we see all the sample servers are already set up. Now if I go to the top configuration and I say test, this is going to walk through all the settings that we have right now and just, just make sure they're, they're valid. I may see some warnings. Um, it's going to generate any of the cryptographic keys that are going to be necessary for secure communication between client and server. Uh, this can take a bit of time, so I'm going to pause the video for a moment. So the, that part's done now. It took about five minutes. Uh, it's gone through. As you can see, we've got green check marks all the way down. So, can, if you want to look at details, we can click, look at details around what was actually checked. Everything looks fine. We can click close. Start, start. Now we can start some of the services. You notice in, in Cognos BI, there'd be an option to start everything. Um, here, let's try to start uh, the let's start the admin server first. You want to actually to save our changes? Yes, we want to save our changes. Now it's going to try and start the admin server. Looks like that went fine. Now you see a uh, green play button on the admin server. Let's try and start the application. green check marks again so the server is all started we can click close so now I've got our green play button on the application we've got our green uh, play button on the admin server now you notice the the team one server instances are still off so let's go ahead and start one of them I'll just start the, the planning sample right click on it and say start 
So that started fine. It took a couple minutes, but uh, it registered the TM1 server service in the control in the services control panel and started the server. So we can click close here. And now we see a green check mark, a green play button next to our planning sample. Uh, we can exit out of here now. So as we exit out of here, it may ask us to start the other servers. Typically I say no. So I'll just say no here and just exit's fine. Let's take a look at the services control panel. So serve our administrative tools services. We're just going to take a look and make sure that the IBM services are, are where we expect them to be. So we see IBM Cognos TM1 is set up as automatic. You can change this to log on as a domain account. So in a in production implementation, if you have a, I recommend having a domain account that is a service account and all services run as that domain account. So we see the IBM Cognos TM1 service, we see the admin server, and we see the specific instance, the planning sample instance is running. So these three are what we want to make sure are running. They all look good. So let's take a look at, we're going to open up Architect. So we're under IBM Cognos Team 164, we find Architect. We see planning sample is showing up. That's a good sign. If you don't see it showing up, it's probably something to do with either the service didn't start or there's an option that needs to be set. Could be under file options. You may need if you're running uh, if you're running on a different workstation. You may need to enter the admin host where the server is being um, connected to, and you may need to enter the specific certificate authority. Some older versions, because of a certificate issue, they had to change the certificate authority. So something to check. So here we're just gonna connect in. This is a sample. It's just admin apple is a password for the sample and it looks like everything's fine. Try to double click on a cube, we can see cube. We can connect to the cube and there's nothing in it, but we can connect to it. Um, just to check the web portion, let's go and look at, here we're looking at localhost 9510 TM1 web. That's the URL for uh, TM1 web. And here if I can select which TM1 server you want to connect to, enter your username and password and click log in and then we can see we everything seems to be connected over the web we're able to run we're able to see the different um, menu items we have here and um, navigate through as expected we see numbers so looks like TM1 is now all installed and thank you for watching